Hello and welcome to episode 26 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Third time I had to do that introduction. <laughs> <laughs> that's we, like a time. we need to make sure it sounds good. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We're investing in some new uh, sound equipment, so uh, we should all have new mics by the next recording session. Yeah, should be cool. Yep. So, so uh, how's Ogre Battle going? Ogre Battle is a great game, but I had to switch my game of the week this week. <laughs> I couldn't get through a single level past level two, <laughs> and I kept failing. Plus, I uh, had my tooth pulled, oh, and I didn't feel like sitting on the couch playing Ogre Battle. Did you hear about that tooth? Yeah, I heard a little bit about it. When yeah. he was like, just pull it, dentist. <laughs> just pull it, and he was like, okay. <laughs> it's... And I guess pseudo expertise, it's real hard to find a dentist that'll pull a tooth. Really? Yeah, they always try to save the tooth to make the most amount of money possible. Like I went and got this root canal about six months ago. And they were like, oh, come back for your um, crown. Here's the one we recommend. It was $1,300. Fuck <laughs> that. So I uh, checked my insurance. The cheapest crown was $260. So I'm not getting the crown. And they were like, oh, it's going to fracture. I've eaten almonds on this thing, like hard almonds. It's still going strong. That's good. I uh, Yeah, I went in there and I was like, I, I cracked one of my teeth. I broke it. And How'd you crack it? I was just sitting there at work and all of a sudden I felt sand in my mouth. Huh. But it was teeth. Yeah. Oh, was it? It was a cavity, huh? So yeah. it just broke off? Yeah, it was uh, a cavity. Okay. So I was sitting there and... Uh, I went in there. They're like, oh, yeah, uh, this one's going to need a root canal and crown. We'll schedule you for next Friday. I was like, all right. Didn't really want to do it. So then I went back Monday because I was just in so much pain. I was like, listen, doctor. Wait, you went in Friday and then went in next the following Monday? Okay. Yeah. And I was like, listen, doctor, I don't have any more time off work, which is bullshit. <laughs> they don't know that. Uh, I don't have any more time off work. I uh, in so much pain. Can you, What can you do for me? He's like, well, which is a fucking stupid ass doctor anyway, he's retarded, but he's like, I could refer you to a clinic who's open on Sundays. I was like, I work Saturday and Sunday. He said, well, I could just pull it. I was like, you could pull my tooth? He was like, yeah, I'll pull it. I was like, all right. It was my wisdom tooth anyway. Oh, was it? There it is. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I, I cleaned it. You notice how there's still some blood on it. Yeah, you notice how the the roots branch outward. They're supposed to go inward, but this branched outward. Do you only have three roots? Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of weird. I thought you had, you're supposed to have four. No, not on molars. I thought molars had four. I don't. I don't think so. So yeah, there's my tooth. I kept it. I, I asked the doctor. I was like, "Can I keep this tooth?" And he said, "Uh, we'll see." <laughs> So, so then he went to go write chart notes or something. So I grabbed it off the uh -huh. the tray and put it in my pocket. And the um, did he come back and look for the tooth? The dental assistant came back and was like looking around. <laughs> and and I was like, I'm keeping my own tooth. You're not giving it to a tooth fairy. Yeah, what were they going to do with it? I don't know. Dispose of it maybe, but I, I kept taken it. it too right off the damn yep, tray. Look at that big old tooth. I'm proud of that thing. Pretty big. Um. So Logan just came out. I, he wanted me to interview him. Oh, wow. So why don't you come around over here so we get close to the mic. Right up here. So who's your favorite wrestler? Um, I would say Daniel Bryan. Yeah? Which wrestler do you hate? Um, Randy Orton. Yeah. I could see why. <laughs> what, what's your favorite finishing move? Um... Um, when he does his yes lock. The yes lock? That's right. <laughs> way, way better than the yes knee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go play Xbox. Thank you for your interview questions, <laughs> your answers. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> okay, so um, got my tooth pulled. Uh, didn't really feel like playing Ogre Battle, so I started playing Pokemon X, which is the best Pokemon game I've ever played in my life. It's for 3DS. I heard there's so many good upgrades in that game. There's that so many good upgrades. That is hecka tight. Like, even the little things like how when you use Surf to go on the water instead of a black shadow, if you use it with Lapras, Lapras is actually sticking out of the water like Nessie. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to touch it? Yeah. I wonder if we could sell it to some ivory hunters. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's what the dentists are going to do with it. <laughs> Probably. 
we should look up what do dentists do with teeth they pull. Maybe there's some rare metal in like wisdom teeth. Maybe. But yeah. um, all the small little features they have, it's a huge game too. I probably, I'm on 50 hours of it, and um, it's I'm just getting to the 8th gym badge because I've been leveling Pokemon up and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So uh, did you have any questions on it? Hmm. What do you think is the bit best improvement they've made? Um, at first, I thought the Mega Evolutions were kind of... I didn't think they were going to go right, but uh, in order for your Pokemon to use the Mega Evolution, they have to hold an item, so it wastes your hold item space. Oh, uh, so it's like you have to hold the Mega Stone? It's not the Mega... It's different um, rocks. Oh, okay. It's like Char, Charizard Ite or something, and oh, then, you know, okay. you can put on Charizard. And um, I think the best feature is the uh, sports training, where you can actually train your Eevees without fighting Pokemon. That's heck of time. You use an arena, and you can boost speed and attack without having to go fight like a Trepinch or Gibble or whatever. How how long does it take to raise up to 252 Eevees? Not, not long. You put, you know how you buy 10 Calciums or 10 whatever, and then every mini game you play, if you play it on level 1, it gives you, it lasts about... 10 seconds and you gain four of that stat and then if you go to level two it you raise it by eight and you also have a punching bag that you could hit on mm-hmm. that when you beat the sports arenas you you also know, like attack punching bag large and you you hit it 50 times and you gain 12 of that stat wow so it's it's pretty awesome very less time consuming can you put the macho brace on yeah, you could have put them out too, but I don't think it affects the sports or anything. Uh, okay. That's only in Pokemon Battle. How's the box? Is it better than the white black box for moving Pokemon around? It's the same. Okay. It's a little little different. You could do organized box and you could move like heck of Pokemon around. Oh, okay. But it's pretty much the same. At first you get seven boxes and I'm like, what the heck? But then I forgot when you hit the seventh box, you get like seven more. Yeah, so you could just put one Pokemon in each box. Yeah. And then, okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Very fun game. I know um, Nick's probably bored, but <laughs> very. I I actually um, have been going to the bathroom at work, and I bring the the DS in there. And I look in there. <laughs> That's what I do, and I've been like pooping like five times a day for some reason. <laughs> I've been pooping five times a day, but that's for a different reason. Okay, so uh, for you listeners out there, if you guys have Pokemon X, post your um, thoughts about it. I think it's a great game. I know there's uh, probably a lot of people on there who's like, oh, this Pokemon sucks, I like Emerald better, or whatever. You guys just need to shut up. <laughs> there's a lot of negativity on the internet. and um, A lot of gen- Generation 1 enthusiasts. Well, not just that, but like around the whole internet, like I, I really liked VHS. I liked, like, it seems like any movie you like, someone, like, they're to bash it. So. And just because people like it. Yeah, I hope so, Aaron's not listening to this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, go ahead and post your thoughts. Great game. Brandon? Uh, oh, uh, Tales of Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much time we've got? <laughs> Actually, I've uh, kept it pretty, uh, pretty rudimentary. I hope I'm using the right word. Oh, you know what? You know what's hecka tight? This noise right here. Yeah, for the flashlight. Yeah, I just it's love like that. It's like a paranormal camera. Every time I um, I turn that on, it's like yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, remember when I told you last week where we had to fight the pirate ships and I fought that boss Bautista and he was get claws and he was gonna get tortured. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't actually get to see the torture scene. This chick named Eileen takes Stan out on a tour of the city. And um, Rudy and Mary, well, Ru- more Rudy than Mary, but Rudy gets jealous. Like, this girl's taking him out on a date, and she's just showing him around the town. And um, uh, so you, you just take the tour, and it's, you know, here's the cherry blossoms, blah, blah, blah. And you just see Rudy and Mary following you around trying to hide. It's pretty funny. Who are you taking out on a date? No, Eileen took Stan out on a date. Oh, Eileen. Do you yeah. see Eileen's pink pearl? <laughs> no. She's a minor character. She's the one that actually made you go fight the captains for the um, the doomsday device. 
Does does Stalin break out and start singing "Come on, Eileen"? No, he doesn't. That'd be heck of funny. It would be, <laughs> and he was in some overalls. Um, so when you're on the date, you go to this place called the Arena, and there's this bald dude named Kang who challenges um, Stan because he Stan insults him, saying you're heck of weak. <laughs> because the Kang was like, I'll, "I'll tear you apart," to Eileen. And then Stan, oh, wow. dang, yeah. through the middle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Stan steps up to her, and then you have to fight this guy, and he just obliterates you. He destroys you. Uh, King? Yeah. He's like a strong? Yeah, he's like a strong. Dang, he got pwned right in front of Eileen. Yeah. So you um, you go back to the house after the beating where the torture is going on, and you see uh, Leon with the electrical device on the dude's head just electrocuting him. And then he just, nipple clamps, <laughs> and so he leaves the room and like, all right, everyone, let's go to bed. And then <clears throat> Bautista is like, it's nighttime, and he wakes up. He's like, oh man, there's the door open, so he just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, this is heck of stupid. They just left the door unlocked. And then uh, Leon says, because Don he checks on Bautista. He's like, he's gone. He meets up with Leon, and Leon's like, yeah. I let him leave on purpose because this electrical device has a tracking device in it. So they follow him to the city of Aquaville. Why doesn't he take the tracking the thing off? Is it you can't take He's it off? He's rigged, yeah. Okay. If you take it off, you blow, your head blows up. Uh, so we leave for Aquaville, who is actually at war with Senegal, the um, the main capital. Okay, so you get to uh, this small city called Sheedan, which is right on the outskirts of Aquaville. And you found out that Bautista has already become the leader of Moreau, a town, the capital of Aquaville. You're like, man, this guy already becomes the leader in like half a day, just took mm-hmm. over a town. <clears throat> so <clears throat> they say, all right, <clears throat> in order to get to Moreau, you have to pass through this cave that only comes out at night. Like, okay. So I go down to the South Shore no cave and it doesn't change day to night I'm like what the heck do I do so after talking to like every NPC possible they say oh um, the cave is out now you could go huh whatever yeah. so I go to the south coast of the cave uh, <clears throat> there's a boss pretty easy it's a uh, like a oh the Orgus queen it's like a giant spider and you fight these little Orguses throughout the cave and you fight the queen as the as the leader, it's not that big. I'm we're still waiting to fight a, fight a giant boss. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, so you get. To, I don't think in Tales of Fantasia you fight giant bosses either. That heck of sucks. Oh man. Maybe you should change your game to Shining Force Two. Maybe Shining Force Two is like tight. So <clears throat> I get to Moreau finally, and all the guards are getting drunk due to lack of discipline from their new leader Bautista. And there's this bard who joins me named Carl. Uh, he's like, I'll take you to Bautista because he's making a wreck of this place. And so right now I'm in the castle. I snuck in with Carl. who I had him sit out because all he has it for equipment-wise is a guitar and a hat. Dang. So uh, I got this item called Song B. I'm guessing I use it during battle, but I don't know if it's a one-shot or not. So right now I'm just in the castle waiting to... Cool. So that's pretty much it so far. I'm still pretty um, in the beginning stage of the game. It hasn't really opened up to me, so hopefully there's some more mini games. Keep my attention. Cool. All right. So I'm still playing Lufia 2. Uh, last time uh, I was talking about Lufia 2, I just acquired uh, the services of a gentleman named Guy. Yes. He's from the town of Tanbell. Um, done quite a bit since then. I had a vacation last week and uh, got a lot of playing time in. So I'll try to sum it up as best I can. Uh, so after you get Guy, you you know you continue on doing a, a few little minor tasks until you meet up with uh, one of the main characters. Her name is Salon yeah. or S- S- Salon Salan. Who knows how the na- name is actually pronounced? We always said Salane. Salane. <laughs> yeah, there's no e. We just <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you can never tell. It's, yeah. Who knows? It's it's spelled S E L A N. Uh, she's the commander of the Parcelite army. Mm-hmm. At first, she's reluctant to join the group. She She's really loyal to her king. 
she she basically does whatever the king says. She wants to stay with the king and not join the party, or she would just wants to handle tasks on her own. But the king orders that she joins uh, the Maxim, the main character's party. So she joins them. After they uh, completed their task, they they realize that they need to keep following this evil evil thing that's destroying town after town. Uh, again, uh, Selene or Salon doesn't really want to jo join the group, but the king demands that that she continue on the journey with them. So she joins them. That's right, bitch. Know your role. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, a little bit after that, they meet up with a guy named Dakar. Dakar, Dakar, I know. See, there's yeah. always a difference in pronunciation. Yeah. It looks like Dakar to me. I guess it could be Decker. Who knows? It's spelled D-E-K-A-R. He's the uh, bodyguard of Prince Alex in the Bound Kingdom. Yes, I forgot about him. <laughs> Prince Alex is kind of full of himself. He he <laughs> takes on tasks that he's totally not capable of fulfilling. And But Dakar, Dakar or Decker is always there to kind of cover his tracks or rescue him whenever it's necessary. Isn't he the one that got attacked by, like, the slime and was, like, afraid to kill it? Yeah. Where, like, the bodyguard came up and was like, I'll kill it for you. <laughs> yeah. <He's laughs> kind of like the capable. prince on uh, Braveheart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so, anyway, um, Dakar, uh, again, another guy who is very um, loyal to his to his prince in this case, but the, the prince basically says, you know, you can definitely help this party with their task, and this task is basically going to save the world. So he stays with them. Uh, eventually, they track, ta da track down this sinistral that's causing all this destruction in all the towns. Uh, so eventually, they track down this sinistral, whose name is Gades, yes. the uh, master destroyer, I think is what they call them. Um, they lose to him the first time, but they, they get stronger, and they find him again, and eventually they... they destroy him do you have to get a, a special sword to beat him no oh, oh, so, okay. no uh so after they after they destroy gates they think oh well we, we completed our task the world is saved we're all good uh tia who is maxim's romantic interest in the beginning of the game realizes that both that maxim and uh selene or salon were made for each other and she ends up leaving without saying goodbye. And I, I understand that Brad and Brandon hold a grudge against Selene for this reason. <laughs> but uh, Maximum and Selene uh, get together. They get married. They have a kid. His name is uh, Juros, I think his name is. Oh, yeah, Juros. So that's kind of where where the uh, the story picks back up. It's a year after they've killed Gades. Uh, like I said, Maximum and Selene are married. They have a kid named Juros. And then out of nowhere, this evil character named Idura, I think it was. Yep. Idura, Idura, <laughs> Idura comes and kidnaps kidnaps Jeros, and uh, so they go out to rescue him. Uh, somehow, Guy and Dakar find out that you know they're going that they're going back out to fight evil, and they just join up with <laughs> they the group. Show up, huh? they, they pretty much just show up. They're like, "What are you guys doing here?" Like, we heard you're going somewhere, so we're going with you. <laughs> That's like a hard possible. So as I was saying, uh, Guy and Selene and uh, Maxim and Dakar or Decker uh, go out and they rescue J Jeros, Maxim and Selene's kid from Idura. Idura the pedophile. Why do you say he's a pedophile? He kidnapped the baby. <laughs> well, it, it turned out that uh, Idura is actually a pawn of the Sinistrals, which is what you learn uh, in the scenes. That, that happened during this time. Um, again, this mysterious character named Iris comes in and t gives a little bit of background as to why they're fighting on this journey. The, she actually drops a little bit of a bombshell. So at the beginning of the game, she says that Maxim is destined to fight, and he's the one that's basically going to save the world. But after they've killed Gades, after, and after they've uh, rescued their son, Jeros... She comes in again, and she actually says that his fate was to die in that battle with Gades, and that was going to basically save the world. But now that he's won that battle, he has a whole lot, whole shit lot load <laughs> more of fighting to do. <laughs> they don't really explain why he has to keep on fighting, but they do introduce the. There's three other sinistrals that they have to deal with. Uh, they said their names, but I didn't write them down. So right now I'm at the point. Oh, I also rec recruited another uh, character. His name is Lexus. He's a, uh, oh, yeah. a scientist. Yeah, he's a master inventor. He's actually apparently he created the uh, the motor engine because uh, uh, the reason the motor engine comes into place because they need a ship to sail the seas. He creates a motor engine so that they can sail this well, not sail, but you know, traverse the seas without the the help of wind. They also uh, get the help of a guy. 
think his name is Jayan or something like that, to make a boat. Um, yeah. So, and he, I guess he's the only one in the world that can make a boat strong enough to, <laughs> to support a motor engine. So the, they get this boat, and you know they can traverse the seas. They can basically go anywhere in the world at this point. Um, I got a little bit farther than that, but it's not it's stuff that's not really all that relevant to the story. But the the thing that is most relevant is now that I can traverse the seas, I can get to Grubrick. Uh, you know what's on Grubrick? The ancient dungeon. Ancient yes. <laughs> so I'm holding off on that until uh, we get some time to maybe play it together. Awesome. Yeah. That's tight. We take turns. <laughs> Let our manhood show. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I'm at right now. I'm actually, I've actually, <laughs> I've actually gotten a little bit farther than that. Um, uh, geez, I can't remember the last thing I did. I, I helped these, this two, these two kingdoms resolve some conflict by capturing the ruby stone, because I guess this ruby stone, one of the queens really wanted it, and she wasn't. They weren't going to have peace with this other nation until the ruby stone was given to her. They keep on hinting at the, the, that this ruby stone has some sort of mysterious power, but again, they don't really say what exactly kind of power it has. But uh, So I've resolved that, and now I'm on to... I can't remember what the next town I'm going to is right now, but I'm going to keep playing, and then eventually we'll conquer the ancient cave together. So what, what isn't there like a ruby flower or glass flower you have to do too? Um, there's someone who crafts the ruby. He like... He's a glass blower, so he that's makes right. a replicate. Right, that's that's yeah. what happens. So, so someone steals. I, th I thought it was called the ruby stone, but it might be called the ruby flower. I don't remember. No, it's a ruby stone. So, there is a flower that comes in play later. Oh, okay. So the ruby stone gets stolen by. Um, I Cam think it's Cameron. one. No. It wasn't Cameron. I can't <laughs> remember Bart, who it was. Barty and, and was it those two people at the beginning? I don't think so. It was some. It was someone. It was actually a defector of the of the one of the nations. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. He was stealing it for some other kingdom that was up north, who I don't really have contact with yet. So he stole it, but in the meantime, this this other character crafts a fake fake one just to keep things cool until the real one's found. But as soon as it's given to the queen, like I said, she realizes that it's fake, and they hint at it because she doesn't feel this yeah. mysterious force from it. And that's when they go on the mission to capture the real one. They find the defector and they take it from him. Did you get to the casino yet? I have. I haven't played a whole lot there yet. There's um, an item in there that you get. I think you get in the casino called the Jewel Sonar. Uh -huh. That shows any unopened treasure chests you found in dungeons. Oh, wow. So you could go back to the beginning and go look in every dungeon and that's see really if there's... That's cool. And then that's... Um, a big part in collecting the dragon eggs again because once you collect all eight and give them to the egg dragon They spread back into the treasure chests that have already been open huh. So if you go back to the beginning and like I got all the chests here. Why is there a ding? It's because there's a new chest that has a dragon egg interesting Yeah, I, I went in there for a little bit and I tried to play the blackjack game and I didn't understand it because it wasn't playing like regular No, blackjack. it doesn't. I remember that <laughs> So I haven't really found any game that I felt like I could beat without just getting lucky. Yeah. And that's why I haven't played it too much yet. I yeah. think, well, how did we get our money from um, slots? I think we did slots. Yeah, the, the flower slots where you keep getting the bonus from yeah. the multiplier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That doesn't actually sound very fun to me. <laughs> yeah. I don't really get off on playing slots. but It was fun when we were little. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I'm at now. Cool. I'm gonna keep playing. Treasure hunting, huh? Yep. Man, I went treasure hunting on the way over here. Yeah. I stopped by um, Goodwill on Watt. You get anything? Uh, they had this game, No More Heroes for the Wii. Yeah. For four ninety nine, worth only like ten bucks. So yeah. I was like, Nah. They had uh, Sega Master Collection for PS three, four ninety nine, worth ten bucks. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man. Yeah. It sucked. I didn't find anything there. But I did find some other stuff from Gimple and stuff. So. Cool. And Goodwill uh, a few days ago. Yeah. You want me to start? Man, yeah. So Brad has a horde over here. <laughs> What's this, Gimple? Remember last weekend I, I got two N64 games? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> has any of these been revealed in previous... Treasure hunting? Kind of. Okay. Oh man, 
Oh, Pokemon Stadium. That's tight. I can't believe they had this. Yeah. This game pack belongs to... <laughs> yeah, every Pokemon Stadium has that. Uh, and then the second one... Ooh, Stadium 2? Man. A heck of tight. Hell of tight. Man, that... And we just sold this. I actually did a handwritten note to the person. Well, I've actually been doing that. And I know we've got a ton of treasure to put on eBay. Dude, you got to come up with like a type thing. Because I'm tired of writing these. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, we can do that. Notes. I can print a bunch out at work. That's not a problem. Okay. Um, or if even if you draft it and send it to me, I'll print it out my work. Yeah. Okay. How many uh, items do you have? Three, four, six. Okay. Then I'll reveal some more. Okay. Let me know when you get to the good stuff, because mine's really not that great. It's all right, but not that great. So, Karen actually found both of these. She did the online yard sale and got dibs on them, and we went and picked them up. Now, what, I never see this. Maybe I'm not on a group on the yard sale she's on. Mm -mm. Okay, so she's on a different There's, group. like, Citrus Heights, Roseville, and Alberta. There's, like, four different ones. Okay. So, this first one I'm going to keep... Oh, the NES Advantage. That is hecka tight. I'm going to keep that. Oh, let's see. Let's do this one, this one, and this one. Oh, that makes me sick. Yeah. Adventures Island. That's hecka tight. How much does this work, do you know? Like five or six. Oh, okay. So how much did you pay for this again? The whole 26. bundle? The whole bundle for 26? It was listed at 35, but I talked her down with my sweet voice to $26. <laughs> that's tight. Tailspin, that's what, 10? Yeah. Pro wrestling? That's like a tight. <laughs> that game's fun. <laughs> What's that, like two bucks? Yeah. Yeah. Three more. Oh, Mario 2. What's that, 10 to 12? Okay. Mario. Okay, 99 cents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Mario 3. That's hecka tight. How many do you have in there? 12. Man. Here's some... This first one has sentimental value. I'm going to keep it. Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nick's n what, number one hated <laughs> Barbie. That's like a funny. I can't wait to play it. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I've got a big day tomorrow. I've got to meet someone for lunch at the mall. Did you see how much this was worth at all? Like four or oh. five. <laughs> Double dribble. Oh, Barbers is Space Mutants. Six or seven. Okay. All right. If you wanted to reveal some, I got some pretty good ones over here. Man. So these I'm donating because, just because I've had them forever. Oddworld Abe's Exodus. Cool. Is that the one you like, hi, you can talk to the yeah. other inhabitants? And yeah. Hi. Yeah. Dino Crisis. Cool. This game I found for 25 cents at Dimple in the 25 cent yeah. rack because they put all sports games there. Yeah. It doesn't have Mutant in the title, but it is worth, I got it for 25 cents, it's worth like six bucks, so that's like a, yeah. I don't know how many percent profit. I've never played it before. Super Baseball 2020? I never heard of that. Yeah. And it's funny, when I went to the Goodwill to get these DS... So did you sit there and look at all the sports games, see how much they were worth? No, I just scanned it to see any unique names. So okay. that one popped out, and then I looked it up. And when I went to Dimple to get these DS... Or Goodwill to get these games, they had that in case, that game. Oh, really? That was pretty funny. But they didn't have the book where I would have gotten it. It wasn't complete. Oh, okay. So how many more items you got? Like four? I think three. After these or what? These three, I think. I'm gonna have to find the other thing. Oh, so that's all you have? I think so. Yeah. Okay. 
So why don't you check out these two? Man, five bucks price on them. I wonder where they got them from. Brick a brack. Hmm. Oh man, <laughs> how much is that worth? Fifteen. Ducktails. Ducktails. Don't, don't forget to tell the listeners now. Oh, Woohoo! <laughs> Donkey Kong Classics, 18? Yep. Man, that's tight. You gonna check these bad boys out? Alright. Some DS games. Non-Pokemon, I would have been gotten a boner if there were some Pokemon games. Spider-Man, friend yep. or foe? Nine bucks. Cool. Oh, Kirby Superstar Ultra. Twelve. Ooh, Kingdom Hearts. Fifteen. Oh, that's the new one, the 360, whatever. That's cool. Yeah. So this is the best NES cart. Oh, man, it looks all jacked up. And it's, it's only paid a dollar for it. You could clean video it. Video Game Swappers. You could clean it. How much was that at Video Game Swappers? It doesn't say. uh -huh. Contra, <laughs> yes, twenty bucks. That's tight. That's a good score. Now for the Super Nintendo lot that oh, Karen man. found. How many games are there here? Eight, plus a complete Super Nintendo. Which Would, I want. You want? It? Yeah. Okay. So it's worth sixty-eight dollars. Oh, is it? Yeah. You That's could not, have it though if nah, you want. Not for sixty-eight dollars. If it doesn't sell, you could keep it. Yeah. Okay. It's the um, the little one too. Oh, the, okay. I know what you mean. As long as you check this bad boy out, the least exciting. That's weird. It doesn't have a. It must be old. What are the pilot wings? Oh, Tasmania. <laughs> Our van found that. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Check these two bad boys out. Force <laughs> foreign KO boxing. <laughs> <laughs> I would have put this one before Tasmania. <laughs> Street Fighter 2. That's tight. I'll let Nick look at these ones. Oh, man. What's this? Oh. Spider Man, X Men. What does it say? Arcade, Arcade Revenge. Revenge. That's tight. That game's really fun. Super Mario World. Tight. Classic. Super Mario Kart. Oh, another man. Classic. Nice. One more each. Kirby Superstar. Eight games in one. $30. And Mega Man X. Oh, man. Very nice. That's heck of tight. That's a score right that, there. I know. Karen's addicted to that online yard sale, so. That's heck of tight. So we've got eyes, eyes nice. in the sky, the yep. inter the cloud, and the eye cloud. Yep. Sick. You gonna roll? Well, I, I got that magic lot. No. <laughs> Why not? I didn't. I didn't claim that yet. I sold a magic lot online for two hundred bucks. I guess you did contribute to that, huh? Yes. The the tutor. Yeah. <laughs> and the uh, ninjutsu cards and stuff. Yeah. All right, so uh, die of punishment. I'm hoping for a, a high number here. Three, what, four, five, or six. I don't really feel like feeling any pain right now. <laughs> well, you've got pain meds, huh? So okay. let's take one. Uh, okay. Ah, fudge. Avoid an item next week. Oh man, that type of opponent. <laughs> There's still a chance. What's this one? Choice. Oh, oh, so you get to choose this or this? No, I get to choose my oh, reward. Oh, okay. So that's I'm hoping for a three or a five. <laughs> for dinner. Dinner. We're going to Oz. Nice. <laughs> All right. Would you rather a nut tap? Or a corn dog? <laughs> a nut tap. You gonna do a nut tap? Yeah. Oh man. 
that, that'll <laughs> save you like twenty four dollars. <laughs> Plus, I can't eat Oz right now, anyways. You undo it. You could the, watch me eat. What? The, <laughs> 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 That's fine. Oh, so what's show me the difference between a nut tap and a icicle? Icicle is backhand. Nut tap is front. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're gonna to touch my nuts. That's exactly it. Now, let's go. <laughs> Nick's gonna get his camera ready. <laughs> All right, I'm ready you gotta pull your pants down. <laughs> Lou, Lou, Lou. All right. <laughs> yeah, pull your underwear up so I know where I'm aiming at. <laughs> Look. It's Bloods versus Crips. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are recording. Oh, okay. let me can I take off my shoes. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you just got the right one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you're left-handed, so. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> Icicle fell. <laughs> it burns. <laughs> I bet those nuts haven't felt like that in a long time. Can't bring the microphone down here. No. Me and a. Think of it this way, you saved yourself $24. Do you want to um, stink face too while you're down there? <laughs> it's like progressively getting worse. <laughs> like, the, the first like 20 seconds, like, it's all right, but now with the cramp going on, and now. <laughs> Do you want me to give you some ice? <laughs> that would suck if it was a corn dog. <laughs> Why do you have to take your shoes off? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> do you still take your shoes off to poop? At not work? A, not at work. Oh. oh, man. You've been waiting for that for weeks, huh? I've had like 15 punishments in a row. <laughs> what are we talking about now? Top five? Oh, yeah, yeah. Top five. Here we go. <laughs> you got lost in the nut tap. <laughs> oh, Roll to see who goes first. All right. Brad rolls a three. three. Oh. Nick rolls. I got a three also. Uh oh. Two. Brandon got a two. Oh, so it's a roll off. Three again. Oh, I was standing at two. That's okay. Two. All right. So highest goes first. Yep. And then we'll go to Brandon and then to Brad. All right. Oh, then we have to do my, Matt wants to hear my picks. So we can do that <laughs> the world wants to hear your pick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So what we're doing is the top five worst video game spells, or you could say the bottom five video game spells if you want. The shit spells. <laughs> the, the, one, the spells you get and you're just like, why do I get that spell? <laughs> All hard. Right. Yeah, it was very difficult. I'm actually anxious to hear uh, what you guys chose for this. And I'm actually really ashamed of my number five. I'll just go ahead and say it. Rip it off like it's a Band-Aid. Ether, Quake, and Bombos from Zelda A Link to the Past. Oh, Good yeah. Pick. Good pick. <laughs> I hate to say it because it's, it's probably... It might very well be the, my favorite game ever. But these spells, I mean, you use them maybe once the entire game. Once each the entire game. And it's not to to form any sort of offense. You don't use it to kill monsters or anything. It's just to open like a gate or to solve some sort of puzzle or something like that. And what's a shame is that they, they actually look pretty cool. It's just they're not very useful. Exactly. Uh, once you use them, Link is, he just stands there. You can't move around. Like if you could use ether and like, Kind of like in the vein of Storm, there's like lightning just going around everywhere and it starts raining and like you go around slaying monsters while there's lightning falling down around him. 
That'd be kind of cool, but that's not what happens. You know, that was my favorite location uh, in the dark world, in the marsh, where it was all rainy and stormy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's really cool. But, but, but then he clears up the, the sky, I'm like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. There is a scene in that game where precisely what I said, that's how he's fighting. It's re- it is really cool. But uh, when you use ether, that you don't have that option. It just There's a few bolts of lightning, some thunder, and that's about it. Yeah. It doesn't really do a whole lot. And it freezes the enemies, too, so you can't even kill them. Right. It, it just makes them, like, turn them to stone. So... Like I said, I'm a little ashamed to put that on there, but I think it deserved to be on there. It's my number five. Good pick. <clears throat> number, f- number five on my list is Fairy from Adventures of Link. <laughs> Wasn't that on your <laughs> guest? <laughs> yeah, but you brought up a good point. What the happened? fairy proof rooms? Yeah, the fairy proof rooms. <laughs> So you go across long chasms and there's multiple enemies. It's like, I'll just use fairy. Yeah, you link, just... link to, if, if you don't remember, Link turns himself into a fairy. And you fly across the screen to avoid all the danger, but then at the end of the screen to get to the next room, it's blocked by blocks that you have to hit with your sword. Yep. All right. My number five is actually a fighting move <clears throat> from Dragon Ball Z. Uh-huh called Destructo Disc. Oh, man. Only because I have a personal story with it. We went to a con. Oh, Sunny Strait. And Sunny Strait was there, the voice actor of Krillin. That, which we never listened to because we always watched the Japanese version anyway. We, we watched the Japanese subtitles. And we always know, known it as Kainzan Discs. And so someone asked Sunny Strait if he could do the Destructo Disc voice. And we weren't even in the con room. We were just walking throughout the hall. Yeah, we were just leaving. And uh, he goes... He puts his hand up in the air like he's actually using it. He goes, Destructo Disc! And then we're leaving, and I'm like, and everyone's applauding, applauding, and we're like, It's Kainzan Disc! <laughs> Heck aloud. And he's just like looking like, Shut up. That's pretty funny. So, yeah, I remember that. So I, I put that on there because destruct, it's not Destructo Disc. That was heck of funny. When he did it, we just started busting up just out of nowhere. Not because it was funny, but we felt bad for him. It was like a, a shameful laugh. <laughs> like, oh, you're so retarded. <laughs> and he didn't have to pay to see the uh, panel. He just was like out in the uh, main room, actually, just with a bunch of chairs. Yeah. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... When we were doing the top five spells, I included the Hadoken. So uh, my number four is the, the Gadoken. <laughs> yes, that's my number two. Really? Yeah. Nice. So I, I don't. I'll, I'll let you since it's your number two. It's higher up. I'll I'll wait to go into it for that. <laughs> that's a good strategy. Yeah, I it, it ranks higher, so it should be deserved. Get 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 more attention at the higher rank. Um, my next one, number four, is uh, actually a bunch of spells. It's any status element that you could use on an enemy in Final Fantasy IV or VI, because they never hit, like, poison. If you try to poison an enemy, it won't work. Confuse, that barely works. Uh, Muddle, I guess, works in six a little bit. It turns them backwards, but, um, like, break... Tournament stone that hardly ever works. Muddle and six is basically confused, yeah, yeah. right? So that's and like silence. Like who uses silence? Yeah. Especially on like you try to use it on Mega Sisters, it's not gonna work. Yeah. Yeah. The those, bosses that you would use it on or the enemies that you would use it on, there's no chance that any would work. Yeah, it's, they're pretty much just immune uh-huh. to it. Mm-hmm. And the monsters that it would work on, you don't really need it for them. Yeah, because you would just use Ultima and kill them all. <laughs> yeah or uh medio Meteo. that was my number four as well oh cool that's actually my number two i, I said specifically oh. the the confused oh, okay. confused or muddle uh so that's your number four right brad yep my number three is from ogre battle it's the stun by the the, the attack that's used by the witch it's First of all, it's not very effective. Just kind of, just like the uh, what Brandon was talking about, it very rarely hits enemies. And when it does hit, it's usually the enemy that you really don't need for it to hit. It's some weak enemy that you could care less whether or not they can attack. Basically, or I guess I should explain. Stun basically just makes it so that the enemy can't attack. Um, it's kind of like sleep or something like that, or stone. 
But Be- because an ogre battle, <clears throat> each person could only attack once or twice before the battle ends, right? It's determined whether you put them in front row yeah. or back row. Right. The, how they attack and how many attacks they get is determined by where they're positioned. That's right. Uh, so if, if if the witch is positioned in the back row, she does this attack called stun, which hits the entire uh, enemy unit. And what it does is it just prevents the enemy from attacking. But like I said, it, it almost never works. Hmm. And when it does work, it's usually on one of the enemies that you could care less whether or not they they can attack. And in addition to that, if they get hit before the end of the turn, they still get to do their attack. So I mean, yeah. you, you can't you can't control precisely who your unit is attacking. So there's really no point in stunning something and then they're just going to get hit at some point during the battle anyway and they're still going to hit you. So that's that's my number three just because it's such a useless attack. And the, the witch has no attack. In, she probably has some attack in the front, but it's like it doesn't do any damage. I think the witch gets better further along in the game. I, I think so. I can't remember what her next class is, but later on in the game she gets some other spells that are useful. But Sexy witch. <laughs> but the stun is definitely a waste of time. It's, you kind of just have to stick with the witch until she uh, advances and gets more abilities. It goes sexy witch and then slutty witch. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my number and three. And then the, the fourth one is hentai witch. <laughs> <laughs> nice. With a tentacle cane. <laughs> they have the um, octopuses on that game too. Oh man, they do. <laughs> <laughs> the Krakens. That's heck of heck. Uh, number three on my list uh, is on here because I really couldn't remember what it did, so I had to look it up. Uh, it's a move from Final Fantasy VI. Uh, naturally, naturally learned by Terror, but I believe you get it from other espers, called Dispel. And all it says, uh, out of all the research I did, it says, Remove magic effects from target. It doesn't heal them from poison. I, I remember... It, it removes wall. Oh, is that what it does? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and it might remove haste, too. Okay, so any type of, like, slow or haste. Okay. Pretty useless, in my opinion. Yeah. All right. That was my number three dispel. My number three comes from Super Mario RPG, used by Bowser. Hmm. It's the Boo spell. <laughs> where he summons the boo, uh-huh. and it's supposed to frighten the enemies and make them run away. Pointless. Why would you want enemies to run away? Yeah. And it doesn't always work. You have to rotate your control pad, heck a hard, and get a blister <laughs> in order for it to work effectively. <clears throat> and Bowser is just a powerhouse. Why is he even using spells? Yeah, it make, especially to make people run away. They, and then they have, um, he has a, the Koopa, the mech, giant mecha Koopa that tromps down, and it's just like, Browser, uh, just pick up Mario and throw him. Yeah, with the Hurley glove or whatever. Yeah, that's tight. <laughs> yeah, so that was my number three, the boost spell. I don't know what it's called, but it sucked. I never used it. So as I was saying, number two for me is the the confuse or muddle spell from the Final Fantasy series. Uh, as we were saying, it, it very rarely hits the hits your opponents. When it does hit the opponents, usually an opponent that. Again, you really don't care whether or not they put that opponent attacks because it's usually a weaker opponent that is actually vulnerable to that spell. Um, <clears throat> I just think it, it really is a cool spell in theory, the Confuse, because what, what basically what Confuse does is it makes it so that the opponent attacks his own uh, unit. Basically, he attacks the enemies. I actually hate when Confuse is, is cast on my, my party. It's one of the worst things that I that could ever really happen to me. And it's like really. always works. It does. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. It's not just in Final Fantasy. Even in Lufia, they have a confused spell that. I mean, if you if Dakar Dakar or Decker gets hit with confused, you're fucked, dude. He's hella <laughs> strong. He's hecka strong. He'll he'll annihilate your unit. So you have to basically just hit him to knock him out of it. So it, it's a really effective spell if it's used against you, but it really sucks to use against enemies because no one's really vulnerable to it. <laughs> He acts so. like a school shooter because he'll kill everyone and they kill himself. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what will happen. Well, if he hits himself, I guess he should snap out of it. But yeah, that is if he's still alive. Yeah. <laughs> Fact. Due to the technical limitations of the NES, Double Dragon could only ge- generate two enemies on screen to confront the player. And both enemies are the same character. Opinion? I didn't like how Jimmy was the last boss in Double Dragon. So my number two is the Gadokin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Use the 
that the one used by Dan? Yeah. <laughs> Dan, uh, obviously, uh, since Art of Fighting, uh, named their character Ryo and uh, gave him basically all of Ryu's, or Ryu's um, attacks. They're like, let's take this Robert Garcia guy and make him hecka gay. <laughs> <laughs> let's dress him in pink. <laughs> let's give him a, a Hadouken and call it the Gadoken. <laughs> And basically, it doesn't go as far as he could. His fist goes out. Uh, so I like it because, or I, I don't like it, but uh, he uses only one hand to unleash yeah. his beast of a move. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny. It's kind of humiliating if you ever get hit with it. That's the only. That's the only good part about it is that if you happen to beat someone with Dan, it's always like, dude, you fucking suck. <laughs> but yeah, the the attack is useless. It's like you said, it was just kind of a mockery to what's it called, the art of fighting or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I never played that game, but yeah, I did read that. Was, uh, but I liked how, uh, like in the later games, his super his super attack was a good do- super Godoken, and it only went like maybe two more inches further, <laughs> <laughs> if at all. That's like a funny. Yeah. So, um, do you know persimmons can be eaten fresh, dried, or cooked? Yeah, I actually have persimmons in my kitchen right now. And, and could, I, I cut them up and eat them. They could be used in cookies, cakes, pudding, salads, and as a topping for breakfast cereal. Is this leading up to your number one? You're like, these facts? What are you talking about? Huh? <laughs> these random facts that you're fitting <laughs> out. Is it leading up to a number one? Are you like building suspense? No. Oh. I'm just giving various facts and opinions. Okay. What's your opinion on the persimmons? I like them because they remind me of my grandmother. She used to make good persimmon cookies. Interesting. Uh, my number two is going to be the spell Angel from Breath of Fire 2. Uh, Nina learns this spell, and it's just like a rainbow goes across yeah. the screen. I think it's supposed to kill zombies or the undead, but it seems to like I never got it to work, and I never found the use for it, and I never used it. Mm. So that was my number two. My number one is also from Legend of Zelda 2. It's Link's spell, the <laughs> spell spell. It doesn't really do anything, and it takes up a shitload of your magic meter. Um, what, I think it says something like, when you get this from the wise man, he says something like, speak the words, and that's all he really says about it. <laughs> doesn't really say what it does. So you're thinking, oh, okay, well, I guess I must use this just to like unveil some secrets somewhere along in the game. And eventually, at one point it does, there's like a building in some town that if you say spell... It'll, you know, reveal this building that you have to go into. I can't remember what the purpose is. I think you get thunder. Is that what it is? Well, that makes sense. But uh, that's really the only time in the whole game that you ever use it. And it's just, it's a waste of a spell. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think it turns the, some of the minor enemies into like those little dot characters if you use it in the, in the battle scenes. But yeah. Like I said, it, it just sucks because you're going around the game hoping that this is going to open some other secrets and it takes down like almost all of your magic meter when you use it. So after you use it, you can't really use it again until you gained up enough of those little magic meter And those bottles. things are hard to come by. They can be hard to come by, especially the red ones. Yeah. The red ones are really rare to find. You know what I think would have made that spell a lot better is if when they turned them into the blue blob things, mm-hmm. you gain the experience as if it was the original oh, enemy. Yeah. That's, that would be But cool you, when you kill it, you still get two experience points. Yep. Yeah, you're right. Dude, it's stupid. It does, it does suck. So that's my number one. Um, do you know Anton Jameson? He's a basketball player. For the LA Clippers? He probably plays for the Clippers now, sure. Uh, you know his middle name is Cortez? I did not know that. It's a very Hispanic sounding it is. little name. He'll come b- back up later on. Mm. Foreshadowing. <laughs> Looking uh, forward to it. <laughs> uh, number one on my list uh, is a worst summon spell in Final Fantasy IV, and that's Imp. <laughs> <laughs> uh, has a base damage of eight non elemental attack. In order to get it, the, you have to fight imps until one of them drop it as an item. I think it's like 1 out of 52. 64, I think. It's, yeah, 1 out of 64. You're like, man, I'm killing all these imps, I'm gonna, it's going to be a good spell. It sucks. I heard of the DS version, they upped the base damage to 30. So Ooh. Yeah, so instead of it, it's 30. But still, even though, even then, that sucks. My number one spell is going to be a spell from Zelda 2, The Adventures of Link as well. It's going to be Fire. <laughs> 
fire does kill the metal enemies or whatever, but it's still retarded. It just kills the metal enemies. You don't even have to kill the boss for it. Mm -hmm. You don't. You only use it uh, just to kill the metal enemies. And I guess error. The guy says, "When all else fails, use fire." <laughs> When we were little, we didn't know what the heck that meant. Yeah. And so we just found out, oh, these kills the metal enemies. But it's a very slow fireball that goes floating across the screen, and it doesn't do very much damage at all. I think I used it to kill the bats a lot of the time. But, but yeah. Yeah, it is pretty weak. Yeah, like the little vampires. The, the, some bats turn into the vampires. Mm. Yeah. And I think it kills, like, those little... Like scorpion looking things yeah. that crawl around on the ground. Give you, I think, 150 experience points. Yeah. So you said it killed the metal guys? Like the uh, the metal enemies, like the metal spiders. Like when you hit them, they go cling. That's what I mean. I don't mean. Oh, iron okay. So that you were including the uh, the scorpion looking yeah. guys. Okay. No, I was. I never thought of those guys as metal. I just thought they had like a hard exoskeleton mm -hmm. or yeah. something. That could be. I just did it because I heard ding ding when yeah. you hit it. So you could go through that whole game without even getting the fire spell. It wouldn't have any, yeah, you could still beat it without getting fire. Huh. There's no point where it's necessary to use fire? I don't think so. Hmm. Yeah, I can't think of one. And like the reflex spell, that, that was tight. We kill the wizard robes. I wonder if there's a boss where you have to use fire. I can't think of it, though. You, you know, think, so, you think uh, that would make sense? But I, I, I can't think yeah. of one, now. Hmm. So... Let's go ahead and, and, and I don't, that was kind of a downer. I don't like doing negative top five. So let's go uh, do a palate cleanser and we're just random. Let's go with Logan's question. What's your favorite WWE superstar right now? Brandon's mm. first. <laughs> uh, funny you should bring that up. Uh, right now it's CM Punk. Okay. Should why, I elaborate? Why is it funny? Oh, because <laughs> remember how I told you I had something titillating to talk about? Oh, yeah. I was inspired by him in his documentary. Oh, you watched, that's the documentary that yeah. you watched? Yeah. Um, okay. He's, uh... But let's go around and then we'll go back to it. Sorry, okay. I was interrogating. Yeah. Uh, I haven't really, I've been watching a lot of wrestling lately. I, didn't, I haven't really thought of this question. Um, Kane's been out of action for quite a while now. I guess it'd have to be Goldust, because Goldust is really prevalent He's right now. He's heck tight. So I'll, I'm going to go with Goldust. That's cool. I'm going to go with uh, Darren Young. <laughs> uh huh. Because he's very courageous for coming out. It was really. Did you see the interview that he did? No. I'm, he, I'm gonna watch it though. It's it's like a minute long. It's not gonna take very much time. It it, it was so subdued. It was like it was just like a, in a in a in a conversation that he was having with a random guy. Not a random guy. It was a TMZ reporter. But a TMZ reporter just catches him in an airport ter airport terminal, and uh, he's get grabbing his luggage, and he's at he the the interviewer asks him. Something like, um, do you ever think uh, there would be a, a gay superstar in the WWE? And he's all, yeah, I, I, sure I do. He's all, what? And the interviewer says, why do you think that? And he says, well, because I'm gay. That's, and the, the interviewer's like, say that again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 it was just really cool the way he did it. It's not like he had a huge press conference. Yeah. It was just, yeah, I, don't, I never came up in conversation, but yeah, I'm gay. So yeah. What? <laughs> so uh, then, then the interviewer didn't know he was asking. He didn't know he was gay. No, okay. at least he didn't make that impression. Okay. Maybe he, he saw. He seemed like he was taken aback by it. Maybe he saw the way he picked up his luggage. <laughs> or maybe he was gay himself, and he could, you know, how gay people know. Other gay people. <laughs> or maybe they had a rendezvous. Yeah. <laughs> what was inter What's interesting if you um, if you look for John Cena's reaction to that. The TMZ catches him like a day or two after that, and they they tell him, you know, Darren Darren Young has come out. What are your thoughts on that? And John Cena says something like, "Oh, good for him." Yeah, we were all kind of waiting for that. Yeah. So he, he kind of gave me the impression that everyone, at least in the WWE world, knew that he was gay. It's just a matter of time before he actually came out and said it. I wonder if he's if he, they found out. We're like, man, this guy's heck of gay. He's like running around in the locker rooms, like snapping towels at people. It's like, who's, on, who's next? Millions of dollars, millions of dollars. Do that bark you do. With that, ooh, 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 ooh. That's so cute. <laughs> Go over here and sit on my penis. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So let's go back to the CM Punk. Uh, 
uh, his he did a um, documentary. It's on Netflix right now called Best in the World, and it just tells his tale of coming up through the WWE, um, starting out, of course, as an independent underground wrestler. Um, uh, it's funny because when you watch it, he's kind of like how they're treating Daniel Bryan now, where basically he'd win the championship, and then Vince would say you're giving it up to Jeff Hardy or someone else. And they always kept taking away. They didn't think he would be the face of the company. So um, Did they show when he went on his like, little rant on Raw? Did they show anything like that? They showed when um, he had his own cult. I don't know if that's what you were talking about. No, it's like he, he like went out and spoke for like a half hour and just went off. And it was all like his true feelings and everything. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know if they showed I, that. I think I got to that part. I didn't finish it, but oh, okay. I think that's what they were doing. Uh, he actually had this uh, society where they wanted, to, of course, everyone loved him. The people loved him. They wanted to turn him heel. So they were like, here's this script we give you. Um, this is what you're going to say. He's like, he ripped it up in Vince's face and threw it at him and said, I'm not going to do that. And they wrote his own script and um, basically he started saying how he's better than everyone because he was straight edge. And then so throughout the weeks, he'd have different people come and join his straight edge party and they'd shave their head in the middle of the ring like he got all these wrestlers. Hmm. And he had his entourage. It was pretty funny. But uh, he wrote 14 weeks of shows for what he was going to do and said and just gave it to Vince saying, um, this is what I'm going to do. If you don't like it, I'm out. And so, of course, Vince just barreled over and... Uh, let him be champion and stuff, but um, he contributes that a lot to uh, his lifestyle. He said that the hardest thing to do is live the way he lived. So um, he's like, it's funny because you'll see him, he's a vegetarian. So everyone's looking at him crazy, like, you can't be a vegetarian and wrestle and lift weights and do all this. So you see him come into, uh, like, they'd have buffets for the wrestlers. He's like, well, I can't eat anything. You just hmm. leave. And so, uh, like, Kofi, him and Kofi were tag team partners, and Kofi's like, you're never going to be able to do this. He's like, uh, if I could give all this stuff up, everything I love, then I could do anything. So that's why I like CM Punk. Does it ever explain why he has that Pepsi tattoo on his shoulder? No, he explains all his <laughs> other tattoos, like a lot of them. Yeah. But uh, never the Pepsi one. I he probably got up. it when he was 16 or something. He doesn't <laughs> want to talk about it. I want to uh, look it up. Um uh, see why? See what he what he did with the why he got the Pepsi tattoo. Um, but he has a I don't know if it's him or someone. But I was watching I don't know if it was it. But Anthony Kiedis from the Chili Peppers has a tattoo on here like a like goes around his arm. Uh, and they're like, uh, I got this because the Chili Peppers were the best band in the world. And then they're like, I totally regret that right now. <laughs> uh, he was like, man, I. I always thought the Chili Peppers would be the best in the world, but I think it was on Bad Ink or something. Some show Jamila was watching, I thought it was funny because I have a Chili Peppers tattoo. There was probably a time when maybe they were the best fan in the world. Yeah, yeah, they're they're really good. So did you, did were you gonna like change your lifestyle or something? Because you emailed us today. Like, oh yeah, well I, um, I'm gradually doing. I'm seeing how it is. Like right now, I'm vegetarian since Monday. Um, Except I had some fish on Monday because CM Punk says that he eats only raw food. So I'm going to gradually go from vegetarian and see if I could go without eating meat. Like for the rest of your life? We'll see. We'll see how, la- how long it lasts. Oh, man. I could never do That's that. That's why I'm saying it's going to be extremely hard to do. But if I could do that, then I could do anything. As long as you can still have sushi, you'll be okay. Exactly. Some <laughs> fish. Nice. I was gonna. Well, it's interesting how prevalent his role was prior to. I, I just started watching wrestling a lot within the last few months, but his role now seems to be kind of in the shadows. Yeah, like he he just has this current or ongoing conflict with Paul Heyman and Ryback and um, Curtis Axel, and it has nothing to do with any championship belts at mm-hmm. all. Not even one of the minor championship belts. And he's only on the screen for maybe like five minutes yeah and he doesn't interact with any of the other other wrestlers it's just this little conflict that keeps on popping up it's interesting has nothing to do with any championships (laughs) let alone the the actual wwe championship so 
I'm wondering. I, I'm guessing he's probably not writing his own scripts anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about the guy who came to his aid, Biggie Kingston, or what's his name? Biggie Langston. Langston. There, there yeah. was. A, it's funny because both the 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 buff black dudes came to his aid. Our truth came to his aid a couple like a month or two ago, and that's how our truth got that intercontinental championship oh, yeah, shot. Yeah. And then after he lost that, he just kind of went back into the shadows. And then literally, <laughs> C- CM Punk had a match against this guy named Biggie Langston, this huge bodybuilder guy. Uh, after CM Punk beat him, Paul Heyman came out and was talking trash, and he said something to the effect of, "Oh, beating the Biggie Langston doesn't mean anything. Biggie Langston is just a second tier guy." A novice? Did he call him a novice so, or something? I can't remember exactly amateur. what he said. Yeah, I think amateur was what he said. So, so when they rushed the ring to get CM Punk, Big E Langston was like, who, who are you calling the second tier guy? Who are you calling an amateur? And he, they kind of teamed up together to get... Uh, he took his suspenders off. Yeah. Like his, his, he uh, showed his boobies. Yeah, he was all like buff. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think Big E Langston is fighting, like, I think he's fighting for the Intercontinental Championship. He on, is. I uh, think it's going to be the, the first match. Oh, like the pre, mm-hmm. pre-match or whatever? Oh, you know he's not going to win it. Yeah, I, I doubt it, but... <laughs> It's cool. It's cool when they bring new wrestlers in. Yeah. So, um, when was it? Last Sunday, I went to that PK Sushi place that yeah. you like. It's all right. Um, that was like my last hurrah. I took Willie. Um, they only let you order two things at a time on the menu. They make it fresh. It's pretty cool. Hmm. They have these stuffed mushrooms you should have tried. Yeah. Stuffed fried mushrooms are hella good. I should have uh, sent you a text on what to try, but... I got a few rolls here and there. It's, um, all right, and then like the last round, I got uh, two for me and two for Willie. After like half a roll, Willie said, "I can't eat anymore." Hmm. I was like, "Oh man, neither could I." There was like this huge mound of rolls sitting there. So I asked for the check. The lady says, "Are you gonna finish? We charge for leftovers." Uh. It's never happened to me before. <laughs> they always have it on the menu, but they never charge me. Yeah, but I was like... Because I always like smash mine in between plates, so yeah. I don't see it. I was thinking about doing that, but... Uh, I was There's like, too much. I was like, all right, I'll... um, Yeah, I'll, we'll finish. Let's bring the check. Five minutes go by. I'm sitting there with a single piece of sushi in my hand like I'm eating it. I'm like, man, they're going to charge like heck of money. So I see both... It starts to get busy, so both the waitresses go in the back. And I'm like, Willie, give me your napkin. So I give him, he gives me his napkin. I take it and I just grab it and and palm it and take it to the bathroom with all this sushi. And I'm like, I turn to the garbage can. I said, there's no way I could throw this away. They'll probably go in here and look. They won't go in there and look. I flushed it down the toilet. (laughs) (laughs) Like a drug addict. So, you know, the waitress is like, man, he just had like three rolls on here and now it's all gone. <laughs> so when we got out and paid, uh, and it was 24 bucks each, kind of pricey. It was totally like good. on a Friday night or Sunday night? Sun- Sunday morning. It was uh, lunch. Mor- Sunday yeah. morning. Wow. A lot of places charge differently depending mm-hmm. on if it's lunch or dinner or weekend. Or I think their Friday, Saturday, Sunday price is 24 mm-hmm. and then the weekday price is like 20 Oh, okay. But it's hell- it's so worth it. I'll never go back there. I'd rather go to Fuji. No way. Their barbecue. Do you try their barbecue albacore? They're subpar. Oh, it was <laughs> hell dude, you good. can't you can't go wrong with pepper fin from Fuji. Oh, yes. I could. Just, I never had it there. You haven't? Uh huh. Oh man, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? <laughs> go to PK Sushi. Maybe we go there tomorrow for breakfast, lunch. No. No. No, I can't do that right now. <laughs> oh. I would love to, but no. Um, so I took when we got we got out and walking to the car. Willie, of course, started laughing. He was holding it in for like two minutes. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Is it the kind of place like Fuji where you have to get there and expect to wait two hours to get in? <laughs> it's funny because I got there. I was like, man, uh, I left my house at eleven. Get there at like eleven thirty because it's in Rockland. They weren't open yet. They opened at twelve. Huh. But even at when twelve hit. We were the only ones there for like the first half hour. Oh, wow. Yeah. W- me and Karen went on a week weekend night, and we didn't have to wait but like 10 minutes. Hmm. It's, pr- it's, pr- it's real good sushi, too. Yeah, it's good. But I like I said, the, for price-wise, I'd rather go to Fuji, and I think Fuji tastes better. And you get all the unlimited sashimi you want. That's what I like from Fuji. So where'd you go for a vacation? 
Uh, my wife and I went to, well, my wife and my daughter and I went to Palm Springs for the week. Uh, we did drive into Los Angeles a couple of times. We went to our first playoff baseball game. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm a big time Giants fan. We were in LA, so we went to go see the Dodgers play the Cardinals in the uh, division series. I was rooting so hard against the Dodgers, and it was. I was wearing a Giants shirt, but it was underneath a, a button up shirt, so I was kind of <laughs> letting letting it po- you know poke out a little bit, and you could see the black and orange. And everyone else was, seriously, it was either blue or white, blue or white, because it's all Dodgers fans everywhere. No one said anything to me. I was a little surprised that no one said anything, because I was clearly a Giants fan. I wasn't making it a secret. I just, the shirt that I was wearing, you couldn't see the entire Giants logo or anything. And I was, like, clearly rooting for the Cardinals, too. Like, anytime, you know, the the Cardinals would turn a double play against the Dodgers, I'd be like, yes! <laughs> and everyone just kind of looked at me, but no one said anything. It was... It was Kind of an interesting experience. Like I said, it's the first playoff baseball game I've ever been to, and it was a lot of fun. Did you get any food there? We did. We got the uh, the world famous Dodger Dogs. I was about to say Dodger Dog. Yeah. I never heard of that. It's, it's a real food. Yeah, it's real food. Um, supposedly, it's supposed to be the same hot dogs or the same brand, I guess, that they used back when they were in Brooklyn. That even then they were they were famous famous to be known as the Dodger Dog for whatever reason. I mean, it just tasted like a hot dog, really. Nothing special. That's stupid. It was good. I'm not saying it was bad, but it just wasn't, like, extraordinary. Was it like a Costco hot dog? Like their It dog? was long. It was a, it was a foot long. Oh, yeah. uh, it wasn't a Polish, though. <laughs> it wasn't a Polish. It was a regular hot dog. So That's cool. Yeah, it was good. I loaded it up with a bunch of goodies, like, you know, relish, onions, ketchup, mustard. It was, it was good. I'm not complaining, but... Probably doesn't deserve to be world famous or anything like that. Oh, hell no. <laughs> the, the, probably the hot dogs you get at Jordan's football games are better than that. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> the chili cheese dogs? Yeah. With the, it's like a nacho cheese sauce, huh? Yeah. yeah. Those are good. Yeah, I got one. Now I get it without the chili and cheese because it's less messy. Ah, they are pretty messy. Sometimes yeah. I'll get it to go and just scarf on it at home. Nice. So, uh, as I said, I, we did drive into L.A. a couple times. The other time we drove into, uh, drove into L.A., we actually drove into Anaheim. We met up with Brandon and his family at uh, Medieval Times. That was so much fun. My yeah. daughter was having so much fun. <laughs> she, my daughter's two years old. She's two and a half. So she didn't really know, like, what the story was, but she was just... She was having so much fun with all the horsies. She just kept saying, Nay, 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 horsey. It was, it was so fun to watch her, and it was... My my wife was getting into it, and, you know, me and Brandon were getting into it, trying to find the evil knight to root for, which there really wasn't one. No. That was a little bit disappointing, but it was still a ton of fun. Uh, so other than that, in uh, Palm Springs, we went to this, this zoo. It's called the Living Desert. It was really interesting because I'd never been to a zoo that was in the desert. There's a lot of different types of animals. Like they had... Um, was it hot? No, it was not at all. I mean, Palm Springs has is really nice weather. Nothing like the Valley of Fire, man. No, not quite. <laughs> Probably about forty degrees cooler than oh, that. Oh man. <laughs> um, the 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 animal that I was most blown away by was this. They had a warthog there. I've never seen a warthog before, and it was it was really cool just to watch it move around. And it does this thing where it like perches up on its front two legs in order to eat. It was just really fun huh. to watch him. Um. I also saw they had um, a bunch of, dom- not domestic, uh, cats that are native of North America. And I've never seen a bobcat before. Have you ever seen a bobcat? Only in the pictures. Yeah. Yeah, they, they had two bobcats and they were like, there was a, a little wire cage that was separating us from them. I was like maybe 10 feet away from it or so. And there was two of them. They kept kind of like chasing after each other. Yeah. It was really cool to see. They they look very much like house cats, really. Mm. Their faces just look like if you just saw a face of a bobcat, it would look like a house cat. It's maybe double the size of a house cat and they have these really short tails. That's but, so tight. Yeah, I don't want one. <laughs> it was really cool. So I, love, I saw a lot of cool stuff at that zoo. Um, the other fun thing that we did, uh, Palm Springs really doesn't have a whole lot to do. But one of the cool things that they do have is it's called the Palm Springs Tramway. Supposedly, it's supposed to have the uh, largest discrepancy in climate within five miles. Mm. So, you know, when you're going up this, basically there's, there's, this, there's this mountain that is uh, on the edge of the desert floor. So you start out in this valley that's Palm Springs, and you go up this huge mountain. I think it's like 8,600 feet or something like that. It's called Mount San Jacinto. I'm sure it's pronounced differently in Spanish, like Jacinto or something like that. 
but uh, you drive 2,000 feet up, and it's it's a super steep hill too. Like there's all sorts of advisories about don't use your air conditioning as you're going up the hill. Uh, you know, stay under 25 miles per hour as you're going down the hill. Otherwise, you'll burn out your brakes. And I actually did smell my brakes afterwards. It was pretty bad. But anyway, so you go up this super steep hill, you go up about 2,000 feet really quick, like within like maybe five minutes. And you get to this tram that takes you up the additional 6,000 feet, and it takes like 10 minutes. It goes up really quick. It's cool. I mean, you get to see so far because it's just a desert floor and then there's mountains. So you can see for miles and miles and miles. It was a really cool experience. And as I said, the, the climate discrepancy was so great. It was awesome. So as you're on the desert floor in Palm Springs, it was probably about 85 degrees or so. And after you got to the uh, the summit of Mount San, Je San Jacinto, it was about, I think it said it was like around 50, 55 degrees, somewhere like that. And there was actually snow on the ground. It was really cool. So I uh, had a little bit of a snowball fight with my daughter. That was fun. I, I might have put some snow down her pants and she wasn't very happy about yeah. that. <laughs> But yeah, it was just a lot of fun. Uh, like I said, I did have a lot of time to play video games too. I brought uh, the SNES and Lufia 2 that Brad so generously loaned to me. I got a lot of playing time in, so right. it was a much needed week off. Sounds great. Yeah, it was awesome. So, cool. Brandon, you have a vacation story to share? I think I have a few. Maybe, does it involve Antoine Jameson? Uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> uh so the first night we get to Anaheim, I'm like, I have to take a shower because, you know, the drive is long. Not as long as yours, but uh, the traffic in L.A. sucked. We hit, like, right at 3.30 traffic. It took probably, like, a half hour just to go a mile or two. That it, sucks, dude. It was bad. <laughs> so uh, first thing I do is I start stripping in our room because we have a suite where we have the room and then the kids have the living room with the shutting doors. <laughs> so... Uh, the kids have learned to knock on the door because they know I'm naked a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so I strip down to, uh, I take off my pants and underwear, and I turn around to get in the shower, and I hear nausea knock on the door. Uh, and so, I'm, and Jamila says, yes, that means come in. I'm like, no. And nausea <laughs> comes in, and she says, <laughs> <laughs> What did you see, the front or the back? The back, yeah. Just, just the hairy butt. And <laughs> just the noise she made and had it on the floor laughing. It was heck of funny. Remember we had the hairy butt contest in high school? Yeah. That Josh Tremble judge. I thought it was Antonelli. I thought it was Antonelli, yeah. Yeah. I won. Yeah, you did. <laughs> uh, so the first uh, day we get to Disneyland, we do Indiana Jones, we do... Um, Pirates of the Caribbean, and then we're going to the Haunted Mansion. But lo and behold, Jamila points out Jack, Skeleton, yeah. Jack Skellington, the Pumpkin King, sitting there taking pictures. And I'm like, you guys wait here in the Haunted House line, because it was like a 20-minute wait. I'm going to go wait in the Jack line. And then so, all of a sudden, after like five minutes, Jamila and the kids come out, and they're like, we want to get our pictures too. I'm like, What? Who's going to wait in line? So we wait in line for like 15 minutes because every person that meets Jack has like a two to three minute conversation with him because <laughs> uh, he just asks you questions. So when we get up there, he says, uh, oh, it looks like you have some stitches on your arm uh, like me. And I'm like, yeah, and I have bats on my leg and I show him my bat tattoo. And then he's like, oh, I have a bat too. On my, uh, bow as a bow tie. And like, oh, that's cool. And Jamila's looking at me like, just big kid. <laughs> so then he turns his attention to the kids and he says, little girl, what do you want to be for Halloween? And I just said, a mission. I'm like, what the fuck is a mission? And then, I mean, I didn't know. And then he's like, a mission? And he, she says, yeah, a magician and a witch mixed together. <laughs> And he said, why, they both have magical powers. That'd be like if I was going to be a half skeleton and a half skeleton and put them together. <laughs> and she just looked hecka defeated. <laughs> <laughs> and really, Willie was like, man, 
He hecka, he hecka tore you up. Moted. <laughs> he broke her down. She got moted. <laughs> uh, so after we do Disneyland for a little bit, I'm tired, so we go back to the hotel, and they have a pool there. I'm like, Willie, go out there and measure the pool for me. He says, huh? I said, your feet are size 12, so that means each one of your feet is a foot in length. Go measure the parameter of the pool. He's like, I'm going to look hecka weird <laughs> just walking around people looking at my feet. I said, go do it. <laughs> <laughs> so he leaves the room and you hear him say, Nausea, come with me. <laughs> so they go out there and come to find out the pool is an octagon. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't even even lengths. They were all different lengths. So he had to go and um, so he comes back after measuring it he's gone for like five minutes like why is he gone so long he's like man there's like eight sides to that pool <laughs> he's like one of them 17 one's 22 <laughs> one i can't remember i said go back and measure it <laughs> what was the point of this i just want to see how big the pool was why to see if i could do laps but I, I, he's like really i'm like no you don't have to but the, uh, we, we, I went in the hot tub, and it was cool. Uh, next day, we went to Space Mountain. That ride is so tight at Halloween. Oh, have man. you ever been there for Halloween? Oh, I have, but not, not on Space Mountain. I think it was too busy when we went there. Yeah, I want to go there. I heard it's cool. Remember when you go up and up and up, and there's a light coming? At the top, there's this ghost trying to get you. And then throughout the whole ride, you see him chasing after you. That's so tight. It's heck, and the ghosts, these aren't no kitty ghosts. These are some scary-ass ghosts. <laughs> and there's an eyeball that pops up on the wall. It's heck of nice. Uh, have you ever had the pineapple ice at Disneyland? Oh, it's delicious. I had pineapple wedges. It's um, vanilla soft serve, but they mix pineapple with it. Oh. And you could even get it done as a float with pineapple juice. Oh, damn. Yeah, it was heck of good. Uh, when we finally went on Peter Pan, because there was a huge line for that, huh? uh, that one always has a long line. But is that the best one, though? The yeah, best kid ride. Yeah, it is. But when or we, Mr. Toad uh, with the hell scene. Yeah. <laughs> when uh, when we, you know how it ramps up, and there's people like beside you on a lower level. I was like, man, what's this? Trying to find out, I was. <laughs> Yeah, what is this? I was stepping on this little kid's hand. He was like five years old. He was like, ow, ow. I was like, well, you shouldn't put your hand on a walkway. Uh, they redid Star Tours. That's, really? That's tight. It's really tight. You saw Johnny Five? Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, Johnny Five's on it? Well, he's like the, in Star Tours, like before in line, he's a robot. So yeah. There. He looks like Johnny Five. It wasn't really Johnny. No, uh, <laughs> it looks like. But yeah, Star Tours has done really neat. Input. <laughs> now we just set them low. <laughs> uh, so then the next day we go to California Adventure. We use our magic hour to get the, get in at eight, and there's already a forty five minute ride for the new Cars ride. Have you, did you go on that? Uh, no, I wasn't there when I was, last time I was there. It's, it's really good, but we had to wait in line. That's what's so it, good about it. It's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> can you elaborate because everyone's jizzing on this ride and I'm like well you actually do get a jizz on the ride nice <laughs> no um, you're going throughout the like the car land you see like Mater and stuff I never saw the car movie I thought I, don't, I think cars are stupid it but really is the worst of all of them I don't I, know why I don't, people like it so much so that's why I was like the movie sucks but how is the ride so good so right when you get to like after like two minutes of going through you pull up next to another car and then you drag race like throughout all these hills and stuff and take all these curves. That's fun. So is it like a you sit in a car like Indiana Jones or? Yeah, there's four people in the car, two in the front. No, three in front, three in back. We got these two little Asian kids sitting next to us because they had single rider passes. They were obviously brother and sister. So one was in the front, one was in the back. Like there's a little Asian girl next to me. I wanted to be like, what's your name? You want to freak her out? But I didn't. <laughs> Remember that one girl I freaked out in San Francisco? Nuh-uh. When, the hat? When I bought that hat, the Batman hat, mm -hmm. my cowl, and I put it on, and I was like, <laughs> and she was like, <laughs> Yeah. <that> was 
Everyone was looking at you like you were crazy, though. It's like, this is San Francisco. There's a lot more crazy people. I know. I just had, like, a Batman hat on, and I don't know. Well, the hat did cover, like, half your face and had ears, like Batman ears. Yeah. I guess, but... um, Kept my face warm. Yeah, but in that, it. in that line, that's where I saw Anton Jameson. Uh, How would you know that was him? I didn't. I didn't know who it was, but I like that. Fucking I, six foot, ten inch black man. Yeah, it's got to be a basketball. Player. Exactly. That's what I said. <laughs> He's got to be one. So when I got home, I searched the Lakers, didn't find him. And I searched, <laughs> searched the Clippers roster, and I was like, that's him. Huh. I tried to take a picture of him and not be conspicuous, but it wasn't happening. What do you say? His middle name was like Carlos or something. Uh, Cortez. Cortez. <laughs> So, you know, on uh, Changing Gears here, um, World Series of Poker? Yeah. Uh, why is Phil Helmuth's thing called White Magic? Oh, uh, it's just some weird thing he said before that he has white magic. And he, he has a lot of th- theories and opinions that kind of go counter to a lot of modern theories. So, he basically just titled his strategy is white magic you know, instead of black magic i guess i don't know he didn't really really give a very good explanation as to why he has white magic it's just something silly that he said maybe he's racist <laughs> <laughs> so like when he does those segments he's giving his thoughts on how to play hands but it's going to differ a lot from what most poker players are gonna say mm-hmm. i think as i said that morgan's turn lost that guy went crazy, huh? Did you see that, Brad? No, not yet. Oh, man. There's this German dude. He with t- There's 27 players left, and he has, like, 25 million chips. Like, if you if you go into the, the final nine with 25 million chips, th- you probably have a good chance of winning the thing. So, I mean, he if he didn't play a hand the rest of the tournament until the final table, he would have been in really good shape. He just, he just donked off all of his chips and, like, well, I don't know how long it really took in real time, but in the show it took like 30 minutes. It was crazy to watch how bad he just he just lost everything. He tilted. I don't even know if he tilted because if you watch him, his, his expression never changes. Really? He's just totally stone-faced the whole time. Even when he got eliminated, he was like, good game. He just walked away. I mean, his friends were over there, and he kind of he kind of talked to his friends, and they were like, oh, it's all good. Don't worry about it. But... Yeah, the, the first hand that you see him in, he just bluffs off a ton of chips. Um, well, doesn't he um, get trip trip aces? That that was his elimin. Well, I, it wasn't his eliminating hand, but that's the one that got him really crippled. Yeah. So the first hand that you see him in, he bluffs off like it was five million chips. I don't know how big the blinds were. I think it was probably like uh, the blinds weren't very big. It was like fifty thousand, one hundred thousand, or something like that. So he had a shitload of big blinds, and that's kind of how you measure. It you know, how far along you are in the tournament. But he, he bluffed off a ton of chips against this guy who had aces pre-flop. Eventually, the guy who had aces went all in. He had to fold his hand, so he didn't even get to see a flop or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, then he, I think he made a call with, like, ace-8 against ace-jack for an all-in with for another 5 million chips. And then he got in that hand that Brandon was talking about where um, he raised pre-flop with ace-jack um, the guy that you don't like, New, New House. House. Yeah. New House had pocket deuces, and he called the flop came ace ace deuce. So Morgenstern had trip aces with a jack kicker, and New House had you know deuces full of aces. He had a far superior hand. Like he was very unlikely that he was going to be beaten. So eventually, this New House guy gets all in, and he doesn't quite have Morgenstern covered, but it was a big time chunk of his stack. And after that, it was just kind of a formality to see him go because he didn't have very much left after that. It's kind of sad to see him go. He uh, was a professional magic player, magic gathering. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. A lot of those guys are. Yeah. They're, they they like to play magic. And there was there's, there was one guy on there who was uh, like a chess player, I think, too. Mm-hmm. Chess, a lot, of, a lot of them come from like StarCraft as well. Yeah. Long marathon games. Yeah. StarCraft is a marathon game. Unless you're South Korean, then it's over in like five minutes. Those guys dominate. <laughs> Did you hear about that one guy who um, died because he played so much? Star no, Trek? I didn't hear about it that. It was in Korea. Um, he he played for like five days straight and ended up dying. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's commitment. It's like that South Park episode where they're playing Warcraft. Yeah, that's one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> yeah. 
Since we brought up Cars and how much it sucks, do you guys have a favorite Disney Pixar movie? Pixar? I think it's the Disney and Pixar, I think, are basically the same now. As far as I know, I don't really know the ins and outs. But, like, you know, Toy Story, um, Finding Nemo, Cars. But I love Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo's good. I, I uh, love the graphics in it. It's, it's, I like, it's a uh, beautiful movie. Mm-hmm. Monsters Inc. Even though I haven't seen the whole thing, I just like the idea of monsters. Randall? Yeah. Toy Story 3 is good, too. Toy Story 3 is really good. All the Toy Story movies are good. The, the, actually, I like all of them, to be honest with you, but Cars is my least favorite. Did you see Planes? I, that just came out, right? No, I haven't seen yeah, that one yet. I heard Planes is even worse than Cars. Really? Yeah. I, I, it doesn't look very good. And they th- I think they made a Cars 2 also, which I haven't seen. Mater's Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite is Up. I love Up. Have you have you ever uh, seen Up? I love Up. I haven't seen Up. The the first like ten minutes of that movie, I I'm not really one to cry at movies very often, but it was just so it touching. Was, yeah. I I did shed a tear too. The the whole character development between uh the guy the the main character I can't remember his name right now the old guy, but you see him as a little kid and how he gets into this relationship with this little girl. And it shows them, like, within a 10-minute span, going all through life, and then, they, and then the woman dies, and it's like, oh, my God, that's devastating. Mm-hmm, yeah. That's my favorite one. Uh, the Incredibles is also very good as oh, well. Oh, yeah, that is. What about non-Pixar, like, regular animation? Are we sticking with Disney, Disney films? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you're, you're not including Pixar films, then? Mm-mm. Hmm. That's tough. I'd have to think about it. Oh. I, I, man, there's so many. A, a Beauty and the Beast. That's what I was going to say. It was Beauty and the Beast, yeah. Aladdin. Aladdin. Uh, my, my favorite part of Beauty and the Beast is Gaston. <laughs> <laughs> I always like the villain songs in the Disney movies. They're always way Yeah, better. The Lion King. Yeah. Scar had a really good song. Um,. Aladdin, really, Jafar didn't have a song, mm-hmm. but Robin Williams was excellent in that movie. Uh, Little Mermaid, I love that movie too. Um, Eric Grows a Boner. No, The Priest. The Priest Grows a Boner. <laughs> <in> that <movie. laughs> That's like a funny. Takes a Viagra. He's like, oh, man, it's kicking in. <laughs> I didn't like uh, Ursula, though, as a villain. They could have done a better one. They could have made her more sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that the point? That she wasn't supposed to be sexy? I guess so. I liked, um, Sword in the Stone. It's a good one. I didn't like that one. I always liked it when he was a chipmunk, and the female chipmunk was always chasing him, <laughs> and then he, like, rejected her, and when she got sick of that, I was like, that's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> I like Pinocchio a lot, too. That's a good one. But I, th- I think if I had to pick, I'd probably say Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, that's one of, yeah, I think that's my favorite one. I like Hunchback of Notre Dame. I don't know if I ever saw that one. I don't like that one. I do, I, I really like it. Any more vacation stories? Uh, no, not really. So you had no interaction with Antoine Jameson, you just saw him? Yeah, I just saw him. He was like 10 people behind me. Really? Yeah. I don't know what I would do in that situation. I think I'd at least say hi or something mm-hmm. I got one story when we went on vacation with our mom oh man to Disneyland to Disneyland I've seen a famous person at Disneyland every time I went so we're walking by uh, the, the middle court the, the middle of Disneyland but where all the lands meet yeah, yeah like yeah. right by Adventureland and so we're walking and all of a sudden we see Ron Jeremy <laughs> <laughs> and, and me and Brandon's like, look, it's Ron Jeremy, it's Ron Jeremy. And look, he didn't look, have look. any kids with him. Scoping out the tail. <laughs> so we're, we're all like getting all uppity. And our mom's like, what is wrong with you guys? And we're like, look, that's Ron Jeremy. She goes, oh, I didn't recognize his face. <laughs> <laughs> that was like perfect timing on her part. And she was like dead serious. Yeah. And she's like, no, you know, because he was on the surreal life, he looked different. <laughs> it looked like he gained weight. Like, yeah, mom, sure. <laughs> Man, he was on a mission. He was trucking. He was all sweaty and hot. 
Nice. And it wasn't even that hot. <laughs> <laughs> He had that horn sweat going on. <laughs> I guess. Okay, so Brandon, you got some sport tricks for us? Hello, and welcome to the Puck Nuts Minute. <laughs> this is Ming Chen. No, uh, uh, got some requests for to give my my sports picks. Uh, we've got the Carolina Panthers against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now I know Pirates are in this season. <laughs> <laughs> Akira, Pirates are Akira. Akira. <laughs> <laughs> but um, after that Pirates of the Caribbean ride, they really need to do it up. They need to make it better. You didn't like the uh, addition of Johnny Depp in there? Oh, I really did the first mm-hmm. 20 times I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> but after Johnny Depp was added in, I thought maybe they'd do something after I haven't been there in a few years, but they haven't. No. So I'm going for Panthers. That's I think a smart pick. I think that was on considering the, that the the uh, Buccaneers are 0 and 7. Oh, are they? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they have, they have yet to even come close to winning a game. Oh man, <laughs> that was a good pick, man. <laughs> now this team, this this matchup is kind of close. I, well, I know both of the colors are blue and gray, the Cowboys and the Lions. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, I have to go with the Cowboys. Uh, my, I've heard a few people talking about the Lions. Uh, might or will probably beat them, but I'm just going to go straight for the Cowboys just because of Zachy McBee and because I like the Cowboys. That's a good pick. Now, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Cleveland Browns, <laughs> the Kansas City Chiefs really got their act together. Uh, it seems that their their helmets are more shiny than the, than the stupid brown. The orange tinge of the brown. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's got more, they got more happening up there. That, that reminds me of the, the episode we did where we had the orange brown uh, debate. Remember the helmets are yeah. orange, so they're brown. Yeah, I was proven wrong. I just thought that because it was brown, it was right. brown. Which seems logical, but... And that also played into my decision. <laughs> if you're going to be called the Browns, why pick an <laughs> off-color like orange? Get your, your fucking honest? story straight, guys. <laughs> Who are you trying to fool here? Uh, so you're going with the Chiefs? I am. I'm going with the Chiefs. That's a good pick also. Tight. Uh, this one's hard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I why? Because re- you couldn't come up with some good logic? No, no, no. <laughs> I really like the Dolphins. Yeah. Uh, you know, Dolphins, but Tom Brady. I mean, go, Tom Brady Such was a the boat. Man. <laughs> uh, I think he beat the Saints, I want to say. Didn't they beat the Saints? Uh, Who's this? The Patriots? Like yeah. Super Bowl 35 or something? I don't know. What this you're this about? season. <laughs> I think you sent me a text saying Brady mowed over the Saints. Yep. Because I won't Oh, four that was like like the first day of my vacation. I, as soon as I walked into my room, I, that game was on. Yeah. It, um, they had a pretty big time comeback against the Saints, that's right. So that's why I picked the Patriots over the Dolphins. Uh, next team, the Saints and the Bills. Fuck New York. I'm going with the Saints. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember you had such distaste for that song by Rihanna, New York. Uh, Alicia Keys? Was it? I thought it was Rihanna. No, is it Alicia Keys with Jay Z? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's called like Empire State of Mind. Or yeah, something. I hate that song. Yeah, yeah, I hate songs about New York. Yeah, uh, I just don't like Alicia Keys. Uh, New York Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles. Why? Because that's where Aaron lives. Fuck New York. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll remember that for next time. <laughs> uh, Jacksonville Jaguars and the Forty ers Uh. Jaguars. Wow. No, I picked the 49ers. I'm just saying I'm disappointed in the Jaguars. Yeah, they pretty much suck. With having an awesome team name. <laughs> uh, New York Jets and the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, the orange and black also. Fuck New York. That's right. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers and the Oakland Raiders. I hate, I hate the Raiders. I hate <laughs> both of those teams because everyone's on the Steelers band. I know. Right? It was, I, if I could leave one blank, this is one I would leave blank because <laughs> of the Steelers with Jeremiah and then the Raiders with <laughs> Walt and like everyone else who loves the Raiders. I mean, Walt? Uh, he was my old boss at Domino. Oh, okay. He lo- really loved the I Raiders. I thought you meant Walt Flanagan. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, praise be to Flanagan. Uh, uh so I picked the Steelers. I had to choose one. I went up to my buddy and said, 
can I just turn this in like this? And he's like, you didn't circle one. <laughs> so I circled the Steelers. They stole my choice. Disappointing. With the Raiders, you could get in for a game of five bucks. We'll get you in. <laughs> five <laughs> bucks for a, or a can to recycle? <laughs> no, five bucks for your life. Because if you go, you're destined to die. <laughs> <laughs> get a battery thrown at you. Uh, Washington Redskins. Or the Denver Broncos. <laughs> Oh, the Cowboys versus the Indians. <laughs> the Broncos. <laughs> Cowboys always win. <laughs> With their uh, far superior non-primitive weapons. So the Denver Broncos <laughs> taking out the Redskins. They really got to change their name. You hear that big old debate about it, right? What? That they have to... They're oh, they've been listening it. to our podcast? They heard episode 18 where I said they need to change their mascot? No. Oh. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> It's a big controversy. They're ju- trying to get all the Indians' names changed. Uh-huh. It's particularly with the Redskins, just because, I mean, it's really is a racist term. <laughs> but they have red skin, though. Yeah, <laughs> 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 That's kind of the point. That's why it's racist. <laughs> I don't care if they, like, call me white skin. I have white skin. Yeah, but would you appreciate their a team being called white skins, or... That'd be heck of funny. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I probably would feel different if I was Indian. Or maybe if the White Skins mascot wasn't like a sad chief, but it said like, maybe like a white and nerdy guy or a wigger or something. <laughs> <laughs> so you're picking the Broncos? I am. Superior technology. Yeah, their guns over the bow and arrows. Even though bows and arrows are really cool, and tomahawks and um, whatever. Scalping. <laughs> yeah, the tomahawks are pretty cool, but <laughs> guns are faster. Bullets. They go a little faster. Uh, Atlanta Falcons and the Arizona Cardinals. As much as I wanted to pick the Cardinals, I couldn't. I went with the Falcons because of the Raven dance. Don't they do like a dirty bird dance? <laughs> Fifteen years ago, <laughs> I don't think anyone does it anymore. Oh. There's the Falcons or too. Yeah, the what? The oh, yeah, from Zord. Power Rangers. Yeah, that's true. I really wasn't a fan of the, the those swords though. Those were in the movie. No, were they? The Toad and the Falcon, and the, when they got new swords. Oh, that was, yeah, that that is a cool movie. Secret of the no Ivan Ooze. Yeah. Uh, two more Packers and the Vikings. Got to go with the cheeseheads this time. Um, even though I really like purple, can't. I mean, Brett Favre's like at the top of his game. <laughs> <laughs> he actually came up in the news this week. Did you hear about that? Uh-uh. He got uh, braces. <laughs> the St. Louis Rams had their lost their quarterback for the season. This guy named Sam Bradford, and the uh, the GM of the Rams actually called him to see if he was interested in playing. Really? The guy's like. Probably 45, 44, 45, been retired for three or four years now. Oh, I was going to say, he's going to leave the Packers to go to the... <laughs> no, he has been retired oh. for a while. <laughs> so the the GM called him, actually actually asking him if he was interested in playing quarterback for him. And That's far declined. Because there, a few weeks ago, or like maybe like two weeks ago, they were talking about the Packers quarterback being injured or something. And I thought Farr was out. So I thought this was his return game. <laughs> no, so he's been retired. What Favre went to the? <laughs> I can't tell if you're joking or not. Favre went to the Jets for a year, like six or seven years ago, and then he went to the Vikings for a couple of years, and he retired after that. That was probably two or three years ago. Did he get any Super Bowls? No. Well, he won one with the Packers, like in the late '90s, like '98 or something. Brett Favre like went to the Vikings. For like a year or two. Wow. For two news, years, I think. News to me. Yeah, he lost to the Saints in the NFC Championship game. I think the last time I saw him was in There's Something About Mary. Yeah. <laughs> Frank the Beans. <Yeah. laughs> uh, the Monday night game, Seahawks against the St. Louis Rams. Obviously, I'm going with the Seahawks. Yeah. Uh, Got to do that because of the weather. I just love rainy <laughs> weather. People who like the Steelers and the Rams, they're kind of like full of themselves. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm cool because I like the Steelers. 
The Bears too. Yeah, the Bears too. Fuck the Bears. They're on a buy, so um, that I have buys are Chicago, Tennessee. Like Sixteen. Yeah, the Chicago Bears, the Tennessee Lumberjacks, the Indianapolis <laughs> Colts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Titans. Yeah. Oh, the uh, San Diego Bolts and the Baltimore Ravens. Bolts. <laughs> and then the Houston Oilers, all on by. <laughs> what a team, the Oilers! I know. Isn't there on their home like an oil? Yeah, game? like an or, the uh, oil, the like yeah. the Apple Towers <laughs> spouting out oil. <laughs> That's like a yeah, it is. <laughs> you realize that Oilers haven't existed for like. 15 years. No ago. way. Did they change their name? <laughs> they became the Tennessee Titans. Did they? <laughs> the Houston Oilers are the Tennessee Titans. And what's Houston? Houston, they're called the Texans. It's a brand new franchise. That's stupid. It started like maybe five or six That's years ago. That's heck of a Dang. Oh, it was we had football cards with the Oilers on yeah, them. Yeah. So it's, I don't know how you did it, but... I agree with every one of your picks. I'll take a tie. <laughs> but you probably picked the favorite somehow. I don't know. I don't know if you're cheating. Like you're looking up records to see who has the best record. I, I I know the I look I know the Kansas City are doing pretty good. They're like six and four, and the Browns are like two and three or something. <laughs> the Chiefs are undefeated right now. They're like I think they might be the last undefeated team actually. Oh okay. Um, and then I think the Jaguars, I heard they've been sucking. I didn't know that the um, Bucks, Buccaneers were... You know what? After I said that, I realized they, that the Bucks and Panthers actually played last night. And the Panthers already won that game. Oh, that's heck of tight. <laughs> so you got one already. That's tight. And the Panthers destroyed them. It was like 27-3 to 3 or something like that. Okay. That is cool. Um... Cool. And then the tiebreaker total points in Monday night game, I put 40. Just in round number. Yeah. The first time I did that, I put 359. <laughs> I thought they wanted the total points for all of them. <laughs> for all games? And, and Gino comes back to me, the guy who I give it, he's like, isn't this a little high? I'm like, <laughs> a little high. <laughs> Don't you, it says total points. <laughs> And he's like, no, just for the Monday night game. <laughs> said, well, you need to put Monday night game next to it. <laughs> Did that total that? point? No. Oh, it's that total score. Come on, Gino. Well, look, Gino from Mario <laughs> RPG. <laughs> Such an asshole name. <laughs> There's a guy named Gino Smith who's the quarterback of the Jets right now. There you go. Yeah. There you go. New asshole York. fuck New York. Asshole from an asshole team. Except for Nintendo World. Yep. <laughs> Here's um my uh I pulled a nick and took pictures of the Space Mountain rise. <laughs> nice. Who's that broad in the back sticking her tongue out? Uh some stupid girl. Alright, so uh that wraps up the uh NFL picks of the week and I will have some more for you next time. Adios or what do they say in football? Like when they say, like, there, T. no, 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 in football, they say something they're like, yeah, right? <laughs> like the commentators, they like do something, they say something. I have no idea what you're talking about. Maybe you dreamed it. If Nick doesn't know, no, I think that Nick, hi, oh, goodbye. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> That's how you're going to end it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>